Classic Restos, proudly brought to you by Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts, Main Lube Lubricants, and your local Repco store. Hey, let's go fetch another Classic Resto. One with sparkling paint and chrome all full of shine. Hey, let's go fetch another Classic Resto. And show me what I wish was really mine. And welcome to another exciting episode of Classic Restos. Of course, not possible without the continued support of my major sponsors. Shannon's Insurance, Main Lube Lubricants and your local Repco store scattered across Australia and New Zealand. How good is Shannon's Insurance? Even if you want to cover a military vehicle such as this. When you get a sec, why not pick up the phone and give them a call on 134646 or you can visit them online at shannons.com.au. Main Lube Lubricants, how cool are these people? Send away an oil sample from your engine, gearbox, transmission or diff for a full analysis and report via their laboratory. You can pick up the phone, speak to an engineer. Visit Main Lube at mainlube.com. You know, dealing with your local Repco store has many advantages. As soon as you walk through the front door, you're greeted with experience. Now that goes for a trade customer or a retail person such as myself. You'll have access to a stock inventory of $50 million worth of more parts for more cars. That equates to 900,000 parts, the equivalent of 90 stores. Visit your local Repco store. They are scattered across Australia and New Zealand. Visit them online at repco.com.au and repco.co.nz. All major sponsors can be found at classicrestos.com.au. And on today's show, I have travelled to the beautiful Corolla on the banks of the Murray River for the 34th annual Corolla Swim-In and Military Vehicle Gathering. You know, you're hard pushed to find a nicer location and crossing the Murray River has Victoria just behind me while New South Wales is about 150 metres in front of me. And we are here because of the KVE, standing for Car Key Vehicle Enthusiasts, showcasing restored and preserved military vehicles and all clubs are invited. This is the largest military vehicle gathering that you'll find in the Southern Hemisphere and you won't find a nicer or a more eager group of people willing to promote their interest. The KVE, it's about people and families. That is why everyone is welcome to this event. And it's attracting vehicles and people travelling from places such as Darwin and Perth and even overseas to enjoy this seven-day celebration. But before we start today's show, let's have a little look at this amazing location. Firstly, it's a hats off to the Ballpark Caravan Park to host the event as everyone simply takes over. We are on the banks of the Murray River, the waterway that divides New South Wales with Victoria. Corowa has far too much to mention here. It's home to rural pastures, fine wines and family recreation. Corowa is known for its history, incorporating whiskey and chocolate, and even Max's Motor Museum. If you'd like to find out more information of touring the Corowa area, get in touch with the Corowa Shire Council. Hi Fletch, this is a 1942 Ford Jeep, uh, used in World War II and many other conflicts afterwards, used by the American Army and many other armies later on. It has a 134 cubic inch side valve engine, three-speed gearbox, uh, high and low range four-wheel drive. This is a 1942 Ford GPA Amphibious Jeep. Uh, she was restored about 18 months ago after five years uh, restoration. It came off a property up the top end of Brisbane in the early 70s where she was used for station work. They are designed for river crossings and uh, just short reconnaissance work, not really long haul on the river, although this one's already done over 300 kilometres. 
What an event. This is where it all happens if you're into your military vehicles, even if you're not. Richard, welcome to the show. How's it going, Fletch? It's great to be here yet again. Mate, it's great to see you. And a bloke like yourself, you're not a radical, but you've got this uh, amphibian vehicle, which is absolutely awesome. Yes, it's a fairly rare vehicle, Fletch. It's a 1942 Ford GPA. Uh, they were made initially by the uh, US government uh, under contract using the Willys side valve motor. Um, made by Ford, right? Yeah, it was made by Ford, but the actual engine was the original Willys Jeep design. So basically it's a Willys Jeep made by Ford sitting inside a boat hull. Richard, where did you get the vehicle from? Where did you find it? Uh, it came originally off a property up the top end of Queensland and a collector called Ian Greaves initially found the vehicle. He hung onto it for many years under his house and restored and I bought it as a very sad project about five years ago. It's undergone many thousands of hours of restoration and yeah, finally we've got what we see here today. Talk about a classic resto. I mean this today, there's no doubt about it. This looks better than what it would have knew. I mean, when these were purpose built, you know, it was for it was wartime. They were built to a budget. They had to get them out of the door, though, for a, a purpose, weren't they? I mean, there's no chrome on these babies. No, they really are a very roughly put together vehicle, and to me, that's the charm of them. You see spot welds and fusion welds all down them, and the hard part restoring them is not over restoring them. Are they stuffed up though in the colour department because being dark green, when they're in the bush, no one could see them. Well, you know, that's how it is. I guess they didn't want to be seen too often at all, mate. Richard, thanks for being on today's show, mate. Great to catch up. I've never had a vehicle like this on Classic Resto, so you're number one, mate, in 250-odd uh, episodes or how many we've done. You've been swimming in? Yeah, uh, really, It really is a tribute to the old boys that gave us the freedom. Also, you don't need good door seals either because, I mean, it's just a, a totally welded unit, which, which I have to ask, Driveline, before you go, got to ask you, Richard, driveline, how is everything sealed, like diff housing, all that type of thing? Well, the diff housings themselves, we pressurise today to stop water going in. There how, how, do you, how do you pressurise them? A little small 12-volt compressor. We put the air in through the breathers into the diffs, then run lines out to the wheel bearings just to, so there's a positive pressure to keep the water out to minimise maintenance. Yeah. See, there's always an element of cleverness. And you wonder why I love doing my show. Thanks again, Richard. Richard, great to meet you. See you again. See how Shannon's Insurance can help you. Pick up the phone and give them a call on 134646 or visit Shannon's online at shannons.com.au. Visit Main Lube Lubricants at mainlube.com.au and visit your local Repco store around Australia and New Zealand as well. Out of the water now and onto dry land. Have a go at this. Scott, welcome to the show. Thank you, Fletch. Thanks for having us. That's right, mate. When I see a little Jeep like this, I think of MASH. TV series MASH. Everyone loves MASH. I really think that that TV series helped to put these little Jeeps on the map, didn't they? Oh, most definitely. Everybody sort of puts the two together. They, are, yeah, they go hand in hand on that. Yeah. You've had this Jeep a while. You know it inside out and back to front. Tell us about it. Um, it's a 1942 uh, Ford GPW and it's made under licence from the Willys. I mean, these were workhorses, weren't they? Well, that's it. They were built to do a job, and they did that well. And, yes, they put recreational four-wheel driving on the mat. When the diggers and the soldiers came out of the war, they all wanted something like this, because they knew they could do anywhere and go anywhere. Yeah. Um, I've heard stories, too, that apparently thousands of these after the war were, were pushed into the ocean. What, what's the go there? There were thousands that the United States had to get rid of. Well, yes, they were sent to Allied forces under Lend-Lease, which meant that during the course of the war, the governments had use of them. If they didn't pay for them, they had to return them back to the US. And the US didn't want that kind of logistics of bringing that stuff back. So, yeah, they were destroyed in the thousands of whichever way was easiest for that country to destroy them. Just like our classic cars going to the crushes, isn't it? You know, I mean, at the time, I suppose it was a, a done thing or an accepted thing. It's only because we're 40, 50, 60, 70 years down the track and we think, oh, just can't get our heads around that stuff. No, but that's exactly right. The safety of this was that the farmers loved them. Yeah, so the Australian Army pretty much bought most of their Jeeps, so therefore they had the rights to use them for as long as they wanted, dispose of them. Thing. And yeah, they sold them to the, the farmers. The farmers put them on their properties. When they were had enough, some of them were lucky enough to end up in sheds, some ended up under trees. But because they weren't near a scrapyard, that's where they stayed and that's where how we've got them all back. It's amazing to see the handful that are here. It really does mean a lot. On you, thanks Scott. Thank you very much, Flesh. Thanks for coming. The Blitz truck.
It's always blitzed me. I've always found them intriguing, very interesting. Also, the characters that own these vehicles. How are you, Cameron? Good flirt yourself. Good, mate. Good pounced on you. The first blitz on Classic Restos, my friend. Oh, thank you very much. I'm amazed with the history of these vehicles. Not only were they used for military, but then after military, no such thing as these vehicles retiring. I mean, people got them in droves. They were used on properties. They built roads. They just kept on working, didn't they? Yeah, that's really what um, intrigued me. Probably a story years ago on Tom Cruise, the Outback Mailman. Yes. That really um, sort of struck a nerve with me. And um, I've loved them ever since. So I thought, I just want to get a Blitz truck. I wasn't sort of too fussed what we got, but... I just wanted to get a Blitz because I just, they're that ugly, they're pretty, I think. <laughs> <laughs> True. And that's, that's I, I guess, there, yeah, the ugly duckling, but they are very interesting. Now, this is a Ford Blitz. Now, Chevy, they built a Blitz as well. No, well, I believe initially they was mainly made in Canada, but um, General Motors made some here for the war effort, and so did Ford out at Geelong there. And um, What sort of engines have they got in a camera? Um, the Fords have got a flathead in them, the old flathead V8, which a lot of the early hot rodder guys sort of go for, and the early Chevs, they had a um, little 216 to start with, but a lot of guys seem to replace them with a, a 235, the blue flame motor. But, um, this one, that's why I went for the Ford, because I'm a bit of a flathead fan, so I sort of just love the old flatty, so... <laughs> Awesome, mate. That's great, Cameron. Look, you know, what do we say? I mean, geez, so many vehicles turn up at this event. It's huge. It's a real pleasure to, to be invited to the largest military gathering, in fact, in the Southern Hemisphere. And um, it's blokes like you that bring it all together, mate, and, and make it happen. So thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. I have Jan Thompson, Secretary and How are you, Jan? Good, thank you. That's the way now. Massive event for you this year, 34 years. You were a little girl when you first started coming here. How old were you? 11. And how was the show back in those early days? Well, it was a lot smaller than what it is today, but it was. it's still got the, um, the, the great restorations. The people are wonderful. Um, we now get people from, you know, throughout Australia and overseas. In the early days, we'd only get people from Australia, but now we're getting a lot of people from overseas. And why choose Korowa? Well, Korowa was the, the place that, it was, that was established in 1980, where uh, the GPA owners, or the amphibious Jeep owners, decided it would be an ideal location with the river and the lagoon where it's quite safe to put the amphibious vehicles in. so it's good to catch up with them at least once a year. Uh, my parents have been a major part in this, you know, if, um, you know, they still come along as well. Sometimes my father brings his uh, Ford Blitz ambulance, um, sometimes he brings a push bike, sometimes he doesn't. And you don't have to have a vehicle to attend. Yeah, yeah. Interesting people indeed. Now you must have a website. We've got to get this out, create awareness. If you're watching, you want to turn up, 2014 it is really a magnificent event not only do we have a picturesque location here at the ballpark uh, caravan park but we've got these people as well so website details Jen okay Korowa swim in dot org there you go. details are on the bottom of the screen right now Jan thank you so much I'll let you get back to it you're working hard as all these event promoters do you don't have much of an opportunity to catch up with people like this Jan thank you so much and for the invitation for Fletch and classic rest okay. too thanks Fletch it's really great to have you here Insurance, Main Lube Lubricants and your local Repco store. With me now we have Hugh, Jan's father. How are you, Hugh? Pretty good, thank you. That's the way now, Hugh. You've got a sensational Blitz ambulance that you've had for a lot of years. Just give us a quick rundown on that vehicle. I was moving a house in West Geelong and the chap there, he was a scrap metal merchant, Albert Batty into a, a crane. I had six cranes made up out of them in his yard for carrying the scrap metal around. And you know, I begged him to sell it and then you know, Andy did sell it to me. The year was it actually made? 1945. And you've still got it today? Yes, still there today. It's done 5,000 mile 
and now it's done 15,000 miles. That's tremendous. I mean, this is a this is a big tradition, isn't it? I mean, this is uh, keeping the vehicles alive, and I mean, you, you you're keeping it in your position as well, which is really nice to see. And that's what it's all about. Thanks very much for telling us about that, Hugh. Thank you very much, Fletch. For that. Moving through, got David now. How are you, Dave? Good, mate. Yourself? Good, mate. Good. Have a go at this when we talk engines. Oh, this is exciting. Mate, it's supposed to be underneath a bonnet or a hood. What are you towing it round for? Oh, because it's easier to tow around than the 52 tonne that it goes in. <laughs> <laughs> mate, got to gotta love the stainless steel stacks straight out off the top of the exhaust manifold. Tell us, mate, what's it out of? It's a Centurion tank motor. What's the specs? Like cubic inches, uh, horsepower? 650 horsepower, 2200 revs, uh, 27 litres. <laughs> well, I suppose if you're going to tow an animal to a military show, you've got to start the bloody thing. So what do you reckon, Dave? Kick it in the guts or what? Oh, we can try. Time for Jack now on the show. How are you, Jack? Good, Fletch. Yes, sir. Love your truck behind. Now, tell, tell me, I've never had a truck like this before in classic restos. What's the deal? Uh, it's a 1941 Ford Marmon Harrington um, gun tractor, uh, Model 3A, built by the Australian, or built for the Australian Army, World War II, for um, towing 25 pounders. Was used in Syria. We had to get that confirmed, but uh, that's what we were told by the fellow we bought it from. The cab and chassis, like obviously universal, they were used for troop carriers, ambulances, was that correct? Fletcher was basically the standard Ford um, civilian truck with the Marmine Harrington uh, conversion to make them four-wheel drive. Um, the cab is the Australian Patton Roadster cab and the back is just the uh, troop carrying part of it for, with ammunition bins on the side. So, Made an arduous task restoring it, how long did it take? I've owned it um, for about 18 years. And Jake and I pretty much put it together in, in 12 months. Yeah. So the actual restoration was fairly quick. That was to bring it up to Cora a couple of years ago. And as I, you feel like shooting your mouth off, come and speak to this bloke. Thanks very much, Jack. No worries, mate. Thank you. <laughs> What's a military show without a military bike? How are you, Julian? Good, uh, good thanks, Fletch. That's the way, mate. 1941 BSA. That's right. It's a, uh, a 1941 WD M20 BSA. Um, World War II, obviously, they made 126,000 just for the war effort, yeah. plus whatever they had to start with, and they continued production until into the 50s. Yeah. Yeah. Um, some military forces kept using them until late in the 50s. Uh, Australia got rid of them pretty much after the end of the war. I mean, let's talk about the engine. Uh, tell us the uh, size of the engine, how many gears the thing's got. It's got, it's got four gears. Yep. It's a 500cc side valve engine. Yep. Uh, obviously just runs on normal petrol. Yeah. It's um, it's almost like a stationary engine yeah. type yeah. of thing. And not low compression. Yeah, at low compression, not a high rever. I mean, you know, driven the right way. I mean, obviously that's why these things have got the longevity. They, yeah, they were basically made as a sidecar engine. Um, before the war they were basically only used in sidecars, but yeah. they put it to the military that we can make millions of these, so yeah. they went ahead with the design. Purpose built and they worked. Well, Julian, thanks for turning up, mate. Thanks, Fletch. It's uh, good to be on your program. As a part of this sensational military gathering for 2013, the military vehicles are about to embark upon a cruise, just a local tour to a disclosed location. Apparently there's a property with over 100 tractors. We won't disclose that. If you turn up in 2014, there's a good chance you may see that property. It's just so good to see such a cross-section of military vehicles, even an L gas truck. <laughs> <laughs> we've got jeeps, we've got transport trucks, we've got ambulances, trucks designed in the United States of America, the UK, Australian built trucks, the list goes on and on and on. There's no doubt about it, if you turn up at this event, you will not be disappointed. You know, what I love about this particular military event is the cross-section of variety. And when you look around, I'm sure that you'll agree. Here we have a half-track built by White, and it was made back in 1942. Now, this particular truck is an armoured reconnaissance vehicle. Its armament is a 50 calibre over the front with two 30 calibres each side. It had a crew of eight men, and it's powered by a 160 cubic inch JXD Hercules petrol engine. And this particular version of truck only 2,000 were ever built.
Moving through, time for an armoured car. How are you, Bob? Thank you, very, very good. Thanks, mate. That's the way, mate, what have we got here? It's a... To me, it looks like a whole stack of barbecue hot plate welded together. <laughs> it's Scout Car S1 American. We made them for the Yanks for a, sort of a form of reverse land lease to be used as airfield defence in North Queensland. Uh, they were probably about as useful as a hip pocket and a singlet. <laughs> <laughs> and when they came up for disposal, a lot of them only done a couple of hundred miles, you know. Yeah, they, would have, they, they wouldn't have been easy miles, I wouldn't imagine. Oh, I think they mostly sat around. Yeah. They're based on the F-15 Ford uh, Blitz, running gear and motor and everything. And there's open-topped hull, which obviously owes something to the white scout car. Valves. I mean, what an incredible engine. They were so versatile. They went into sawmills, they drove water pumps, they were in military vehicles, cars, trucks. list goes on. I don't think they flew one. No. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised, though, if one wasn't put into an aircraft somewhere, even if it was on a farm. <laughs> yeah, that could, could have happened, yeah. yeah. Wonderful talking to you. Look, the way we're going, it's going to end up the Bob half hour. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. With your, with your barbecue hot plate van. Yes, OK, righto, righto. It's a, it's a beauty, mate. It's a credit to you. I think it's the only one here today. Yeah. And uh, it's it's, the only one, yeah. Apart from one in uh, Sid Beck's museum at wow, Mariba. Yep. Thanks for uh, coming on, Bob. And you've made the grade. You've made it to Classic Restos, my friend. Thank you, Fletch. Good, mate. Righto, Bob, get your barbecue hot plate, mate, and cover up the engine. Here we go. Actually, leave it on. There's no plastic rubbish in this cold, this old girl, Fletch. Hey, Bob. Yeah. I still think you could have vacuumed it for me. <laughs> Dave. All right, time for Dave. How are you, mate? I'm very well, thanks, Fletch. That's the way General's car have a go at this, a replica, a Nash. You would have been at the top of the tree had you had the opportunity to cruise around in a car like this, I would have imagined, Dave. Well, exactly, yeah. A lot of decisions would have been made from this car, I would think, and, um, yeah, you would be pretty important. Now, I hear that the General back in the day, uh, nine times out of ten, acquired a lady driver. Well, that's correct, yeah. A lady driver would have been assigned to them in the European theatre and, yeah, would have been pretty all right. Ah, oh, well, see, the General needed somebody to talk to, didn't he? Well, yeah, somebody to talk to, that's right. Yeah, we'll go with that, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's have a look at the embellishments on this Nash. Uh, what's the year model? 1937. 1937 Nash. You look at the dashboard. Now, this is a completely original dashboard. I mean, the way it's detailed, the quality of the gauges and the condition that they're still in, Dave, that's outstanding. Yeah, I think a lot's got to do with it. It's been shedded since 1963 and um, well out of the weather, I think. And it was a family car, so it was looked after after in, in, in the 30s and 40s. So, Absolutely. yeah. Mate, uh, we've got the uh, mannequin in the back there, got the suicide door, so it's always got somebody in it, right? Yep, it's always got someone in someone to talk to. It doesn't answer back, but that's all right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I sat in it before and I just felt someone was staring at me and I looked around the back and they were. Yeah, well, that's, it scares the hell out of people at car shows. They walk around and have a look through the window and, oh, jeez, <laughs> they hope nobody saw them get frightened, but yeah. Oh. Mate, I love the uh, little slits there through the headlights to dim the light, obviously, so enemy in the air couldn't see the headlights at night you've gone all the way there yeah that's right I mean a lot of people comment on now I've just thought that that would be a good quirky bit to it but um, I mean, the general's driver she couldn't see either but well, you know it, <laughs> some things are better in the dark yeah. aren't they they found a lot of these Nash generals cars wrapped around trees at night <laughs> <laughs> well that's right yeah probably I mean as long as I didn't get shot up I suppose that's they were right. pretty happy Around nine hours for me to interview you today. Thanks so much for your patience. No problem. There was a lot to get through, I'm sure. No worries. Thank you. I hope you've enjoyed just some of the military gathering here in Corowa, New South Wales, and I'm sure that you agree it was a very interesting episode. Now, classicrestos.com.au, that's the website that you need for the DVD boxed sets, Classic Restos merchandise, finding out how to travel, the sensational mother road of Route 66, and, of course, how my major sponsors can help you as well. Now, until next week, no matter where you're watching the show from, as I always say, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, and I thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like Classic Restos on Facebook facebook.com forward slash classic restos tv and episodes can be seen at shannons.com.au well there goes another classic restos thanks for riding along with me for dvd sets and to contact the major sponsors go to classicrestos.com.au
Classic Restos, proudly brought to you by Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts, main lube lubricants, and your local Repco store.